Welcome to our deep dive into the neon-soaked high-stakes world of Las Vegas in the 1970s. This was a decade when the city was in the midst of a unique transition, holding onto the glamour of its golden years while beginning to pave the way for the mega resort era we know today. Whether you're a fan of vintage Vegas or just curious about this fascinating period, stay tuned as we explore 20 intriguing facts about life in Las Vegas during the 1970s. Number 20, the transition to corporate ownership. The 1970s marked the beginning of a significant transition in Las Vegas as corporate ownership started to replace the traditional family or mob-owned casinos. The rise of corporate ownership brought a new level of professionalism and regulation to the industry, helping to clean up the city's image and attract a broader range of visitors. Companies like Howard Hughes's Summa Corporation began buying up properties, laying the groundwork for the corporate-dominated landscape that would define Las Vegas in the decades to come. This shift was crucial in transforming Las Vegas from a gambling town into a global entertainment destination. Number 19, the expanding nightlife scene. The nightlife in Las Vegas during the 1970s was as diverse as it was exciting. While the big showrooms and casinos grabbed most of the headlines, the city also offered a vibrant club scene that catered to a wide range of tastes. From disco clubs to more laid back lounges, there was something for everyone. The explosion of disco in the late 1970s added a new dimension to the nightlife, with dance floors packed until the early morning hours. The city's reputation as a 24-hour town was cemented during this decade, offering endless entertainment options for night owls. Number 18, the celebrity culture. Las Vegas in the 1970s was a magnet for celebrities, both on stage and off. The city's casinos and nightclubs were the places to see and be seen, attracting stars from Hollywood, sports, and music. Celebrity sightings were a regular occurrence, whether it was Frank Sinatra holding court at Caesars Palace or Elvis Presley drawing crowds at the International Hotel. This celebrity culture added to the allure of Las Vegas, making it a destination not just for entertainment, but for rubbing elbows with the rich and famous. Number 17, the golden age of casino design. The 1970s were a pivotal time for casino design in Las Vegas. This era saw the introduction of more elaborate themes and designs that went beyond the simple gambling halls of the past. Designers began to focus on creating immersive environments that transported visitors to different worlds, whether it was the Old West at the frontier or a Roman palace at Caesars. These thematic elements became a crucial part of the Vegas experience, influencing the design of future casinos and turning the city into a playground for the imagination. Number 16, the high-rise boom. The 1970s saw the beginning of a vertical expansion in Las Vegas with the construction of high-rise hotels and resorts. This decade marked the start of the shift from low-rise, sprawling casinos to towering structures that would define the city's skyline in the years to come. Hotels like the MGM Grand, now Bally's, were among the tallest and most luxurious of their time, offering visitors a new level of opulence. These developments set the stage for the mega resorts of the 1990s and beyond, where the concept of bigger is better became a driving force in Las Vegas architecture. Number 15, the sports boom. The 1970s saw an increase in the popularity of sports in Las Vegas, particularly boxing. Caesars Palace became a premier venue for major boxing matches, hosting legendary fights that drew huge crowds and television audiences. The success of these events helped to establish Las Vegas as a major sports destination, a reputation that continues to grow today with the addition of other sports like hockey and football. The boxing matches of the 1970s were often glitzy affairs, attended by celebrities and high rollers, adding another layer of excitement to the city. Number 14, the fashion of the times. The 1970s brought a distinctive sense of style to Las Vegas, reflecting the broader fashion trends of the decade. Visitors and locals alike embraced the bold, flashy fashions of the time, with polyester suits, wide collars, bell bottoms, and platform shoes making regular appearances in casinos and nightclubs. The fashion scene in Las Vegas during this era was as vibrant and over-the-top as the city itself, perfectly complementing the flashy neon lights and extravagant shows. Number 13, the economic challenges. The 1970s were not all glitz and glamour for Las Vegas. The city faced significant economic challenges, particularly during the oil crisis and the resulting economic downturn in the mid-1970s. Tourism dipped as people had less disposable income to spend on vacations, and the city's heavy reliance on visitors became a point of vulnerability. These economic pressures forced Las Vegas to start thinking about how to diversify its appeal beyond gambling, 
setting the stage for the more diversified entertainment offerings that would emerge in later years. Number 12. The Mob's Decline By the late 1970s, the influence of organized crime in Las Vegas began to wane. Federal crackdowns and increased scrutiny from law enforcement agencies made it harder for mob figures to operate openly. The infamous Kefauver hearings of the 1950s had already set the stage for this decline, but it was during the 1970s that the mob's grip on the city started to loosen significantly. The corporate takeover of casinos, which began in earnest during this decade, also played a key role in diminishing the mob's influence in Vegas. Number 11. The Lounge Acts Beyond the main showrooms, Las Vegas in the 1970s was also known for its lounge acts. These smaller, more intimate performances featured a wide variety of entertainers, from singers and comedians to magicians and burlesque dancers. Lounges were often the proving grounds for up-and-coming talent, and many performers who later became famous got their start in these cozy venues. The lounge acts contributed to the city's reputation as a place where you could see world-class entertainment at any hour of the day or night, often with just the price of a drink. Number 10. The Birth of Celebrity Chef Culture While today's Las Vegas is known for its celebrity chefs and gourmet dining, the seeds of this trend were planted in the 1970s. As the city sought to diversify its offerings beyond gambling, it began to attract more sophisticated culinary talents. Restaurants and top casinos started to shift away from the basic buffets and diners, aiming to offer more exclusive and high-end dining experiences. This era laid the foundation for the world-class dining scene that would emerge in the following decades. Number 9. High Rollers in Wales The 1970s were the era of the high rollers, also known as whales in the casino world. These were the big spenders who would gamble millions of dollars in a single visit. Casinos competed fiercely to attract these whales, offering them everything from luxury suites to private jets. The presence of these high rollers was both a boon and a challenge for casinos, as they could make or break a casino's profits in a single night. The allure of high stakes and the potential for massive wins or losses added to the mystique of Vegas during this time. Number 8. The Impact of Atlantic City The opening of casinos in Atlantic City in 1976 marked the beginning of a significant challenge for Las Vegas. For the first time, Vegas had to compete with another major gambling destination. This led to increased pressure on Vegas casinos to innovate and attract visitors. While Las Vegas remained the premier destination for gambling, Atlantic City's entry forced the city to rethink its strategies, particularly in the areas of entertainment and amenities. Number 7. The Desert Inn and Beyond The Desert Inn was one of the most iconic hotels on the Strip during the 1970s. Known for its luxurious accommodations and high-rolling clientele, it was the place where the rich and famous would stay and play. The hotel's casino was legendary, and its golf course was a favorite among celebrities. The Desert Inn symbolized the elegance and exclusivity that many associated with Las Vegas during this era, before the mega resorts of the later years took over. Number 6. The Entertainer Showrooms Vegas in the 1970s was known for its lavish showrooms, where the biggest stars performed night after night. These venues were often the centerpiece of the major hotels, offering everything from variety shows to headliner performances. Caesars Palace, for example, was famous for its circus-themed shows and star-studded events. The showrooms were not just about the performers, but also about the overall experience, which included plush seating, extravagant sets, and of course, the chance to see celebrities both on and off the stage. Number 5. The Strip versus Downtown The 1970s saw a growing distinction between the Las Vegas Strip and Downtown Vegas. While the Strip continued to expand with new, glitzy resorts and casinos, downtown, centered around Fremont Street, started to show its age. The older casinos like the Golden Nugget and Binion's Horseshoe became symbols of classic Vegas. This division created two distinct atmospheres, the modern, sleek experience of the Strip and the nostalgic, gritty charm of downtown. Each area attracted different types of visitors, but both were integral to the city's identity during this decade. Number 4. Cheap Eats and Buffets One of the most memorable aspects of Las Vegas in the 1970s was the abundance of cheap food, particularly the famous all-you-can-eat buffets. Casino owners knew that if they could keep gamblers fed and happy, they'd stay longer and spend more money. Buffets became a staple, offering a wide variety of dishes for a minimal price. It was not uncommon to find deals like a 99-cent shrimp cocktail or a steak dinner for just a few bucks. This culinary strategy played a crucial role in the overall Vegas experience, making dining an essential part of the city's allure. Number 3. The Mob Influence 
Although the mob's influence in Las Vegas began to wane by the end of the decade, the early 1970s were still heavily marked by organized crime. Figures like Tony Spilotro and Frank Rosenthal were central to this era, running various casinos with a mix of charm and ruthlessness. The mob's control over casinos, such as the Stardust and the Tropicana, was well known, and their influence extended into nearly every facet of Vegas life. This was a time when the glamour of the casinos was often overshadowed by the dark underbelly of mob-related activities. Number 2. The Big Name Performers The 1970s continued to be a prime time for big-name entertainers in Las Vegas. Elvis Presley was one of the most iconic performers of this era, especially with his legendary shows at the International Hotel, later the Las Vegas Hilton. The king of rock and roll drew crowds from all over the world, and his shows were a must-see attraction. Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr., and Dean Martin also continued to dominate the Vegas stage, ensuring that the Rat Pack's influence was still felt throughout the city. Number 1. The Rise of Neon Glory The 1970s were a golden age for neon lights in Las Vegas. The famous Welcome to Fabulous Las Vegas sign, designed by Betty Willis in 1959, became even more iconic during this decade. Neon was everywhere, from the Strip's glittering casinos to the smaller establishments off Fremont Street. The lights weren't just decorative, they symbolized the city's promise of endless entertainment and excitement. Walking down the Strip at night was like stepping into a glowing dream, with each neon sign competing for your attention. And there you have it, 20 fascinating facts about life in Las Vegas during the 1970s. From the glitz and glamour of the neon-lit Strip, to the gritty realities of mob influence and economic challenges, this was a decade of transition for Sin City. It set the stage for the Las Vegas we know today, where entertainment reigns supreme and the possibilities are endless. If you enjoyed this trip down memory lane, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more deep dives into the past and present of the world's most iconic cities. Thanks for watching, and we can't wait to explore more with you in our next video.